Welcome to the Paragraphs That Pop webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS, HSA and ATIC students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may just want to watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. In this webinar, we'll look at how to create signposts to guide the reader through the body paragraphs of your assignment, link body paragraphs to the signposts with topic sentences, and use language to improve flow within your paragraphs. We'll look at sections of a sample essay, but please keep in mind that these are examples only. You may have experienced feeling lost when reading something and thinking, what is this about? Or what does this writer want to say? Sometimes the main point is not clearly expressed. The ideas jump around, or the writing goes on for a long time and you forget what was said in the beginning. You need to make sure that this doesn't happen to the person reading and marking your work. Two things you can do that will help you with this is to plan your assignment so you know where you're going, and to make sure you give the reader some signposting so they won't get lost. Take a look at this essay question and the introduction to the essay. Pause the video here and press play again when you're done reading. The essay question is asking for a discussion of two types of intelligence. This introduction sets up the essay well. The first sentences give a definition of the key term and explain the context of the issue to be discussed. The sentence in red clearly outlines exactly what the writer will do in this essay. This is known as the signposting sentence. The final sentence of the intro gives the thesis statement, in other words, what the writer's line of argument is. In this case, that both types of intelligence are useful. This structure makes for a strong introduction, context and background, then signposting, then thesis statement. The thing to highlight here is that the signposting prepares the reader's mind for the information that will follow in the body of the essay. If the reader already has a map of what will come, they will find it easier to understand how the parts of the body fit together. Take another look at the red sentence. The reader would expect to read a definition and critique of each type of intelligence, probably in the order of emotional intelligence first and then cognitive intelligence and then they would expect a discussion of how these concepts can be used in organisational behaviour and whether they are in fact useful. After the introduction, you will then need to write a series of body paragraphs. Take a look at this body paragraph and identify what specific idea is discussed and what is done with this idea in the paragraph. Pause the video and press play again when you're done reading. You can probably clearly see that emotional intelligence is the main point being discussed here and that the concept is defined and explained in this paragraph. The paragraph was easy to read because of the very clear topic sentence at the start of the paragraph. Why do you think it is important for the reader to know the main idea right from the beginning? The main reason is so that the reader's mind is prepared for the information that will follow in the paragraph and so that they are less likely to get lost. It may also be so that the reader understands how this paragraph fits into the overall structure of the paper as set out in the signposting in the introduction. The reader may even want to know whether the paragraph is even relevant to them. So think of topic sentences as hidden headings. They serve the same purpose as a heading. They tell the reader what the paragraph is about, but they are formatted as a sentence at the start of a paragraph rather than as a separate heading. A tip is when writing assignments that don't use headings, such as essays, write your draft with headings for different sections and then turn the headings into topic sentences. This slide shows how there is a link between the signposting in the introduction and the topic sentence in the body paragraph. Repeating key terms like this helps the reader understand where they are and not get lost in the essay.
This is the next body paragraph of the same essay. This shows an example of how one paragraph can link to a previous paragraph. This guides the reader and helps them move from one idea to the next, in this case from emotional intelligence to cognitive intelligence. My tip is to visualise each paragraph as a carriage on a train containing one idea and hooked to the next by a link. Think of paragraphs as visual aids that show your reader the train of thought. Again, this slide shows the link between the signposting in the introduction and the key terms in the topic sentence, and the sentence after the topic sentence. After the topic sentence, the remainder of a body paragraph is made up of supporting sentences. These supporting sentences can extend, elaborate, explain, describe and justify what was stated in the topic sentence. Linking words like and, but, furthermore, therefore, in contrast and so on can help the reader understand how ideas fit together in your sentences and between sentences in your body paragraphs. Take a look at the example sentences on the slide. You may want to pause the video here. You can also link ideas using other devices as well. Take a look at these examples and feel free to pause the video to read. In the first example, the pronoun he and the words add and also help the text flow. Also note that using pronouns like this, helps to reduce the number of times you put the name and date of the author, giving the text a better flow. After using he twice like this, use the name again because after a couple of he's or she's, the reader may need to be reminded of the author's name. In the second example, this is used to refer back to peer support. The word idea is also used as a synonym for concept to link back to the first sentence. Now, take a look at this paragraph. How well are the ideas linked together? What is it like to read? Pause the video here and read the text. I'm sure you notice that the sentences read like a list. There is a stop-start quality that makes it flow not very smoothly. Now take a look at this paragraph. How well are the ideas linked here? Pause the video and read the text. There is much better flow here and a sense of argument being developed. The parts in red show the different ways ideas are linked. The underlined words show how the key topic word bullying is repeated to help keep the reader on track. Take a look at these sentences and think about how you could link them. Pause the video then press play to hear my suggestions. In the first example, the findings seem to be opposite, so a contrasting word like in contrast or however would clearly show this. In the second example, there seems to be a bit of repetition, so using it would help with the flow. I remember being bullied as a child. It had a negative impact on my health, in line with the research of Watkins. Again, take a look at these sentences and think about how you could link them. Pause the video, then press play to hear my suggestions. This paragraph is actually quite hard to read. There seems to be lots of different unconnected ideas. A few linking words would really help with the readability. Take a look at the revision. Just a few linking words really help show the relationship between the ideas. Finally, this checklist can help you with your paragraph flow. The first step is to label your paragraphs in the margin with a few words that sum up the paragraph and check that each paragraph is focused on one main idea only. Second, ensure you have topic sentences that contain the keywords to help the reader recognise the main idea of each paragraph. Third, double check that paragraphs are in a logical order and that there is no repetition of main ideas so that the ideas flow smoothly. 
Fourth, check that the connection between the paragraphs is clear. Consider whether adding transition words or phrases would be useful. Fifth, make sure you signpost so the reader can follow your train of thought clearly by using words such as briefly, first, for example, however, and so on. Finally, revise the introduction to make sure it accurately represents the rest of the paper. For more resources to help you with your writing, make sure you check out the Student Learning Support website. These links will also take you to some more great resources. You can contact Student Learning Support for a consultation face-to-face -face over the phone or via email. Give us a call or send us an email to make an appointment. We'd love to hear from you.